first time a complete stranger gave me a hug, I was a little taken aback. But that only lasted until she told me her name, Heidi, and then I immediately knew who she was. Heidi had been a student in the very first online course that I had ever taught. And as I soon realized, we weren't strangers to each other. We had just never met before. Anecdotes like this are becoming more and more common as online education becomes a bigger and bigger part of the landscape of higher education. I myself am the director of a completely online doctoral program in curriculum and instruction here at Texas A&M. And the picture that you can see behind me is from one of our orientations in which students and faculty attend both by video conference and uh, by robot, but also in person. And uh, given this uh, growth in online education, as well as from a desire to improve the quality of our own online courses, my colleague at Amber Rios and I decided that we wanted to look more into what makes a good online course. And that's the research that I would like to share with you today. Some statistics that can help us understand this issue a little bit better. Across the country, there are now about one million fewer students enrolled in brick and mortar or face-to-face -face campuses. Of course, that's not a problem that we're having at Texas A&M, as anyone who's ever tried to park on campus can tell you. <laughs> there are also about three million, less, uh, three million more students who are now enrolled in fully online uh, programs as part of their college degrees. And one out of every three college students will now take at least one fully online course as part of their experiences. So given all that was going on, uh, we really wanted to look at what it is that makes a good online course. Our findings, uh, based on some research and surveys that we did with students, tended to cluster around two areas of visibility versus invisibility. There were some things that students thought should really be invisible as part of an online course, but then there were other things that they really thought ought to be highly visible. And the very first finding that jumped out at us was how little our students actually distinguished between online and face-to-face -face courses. It seemed as though this generation was so accustomed to dealing with interactions with people who they really never met, that to them an online course and a face-to-face -face course weren't that different. So they looked at courses in just the way that they would look at any other uh, an online course like any other course. What was the syllabus like? What were the grading policies? And what did it take to make an A? Uh, the platform that made this entire experience possible was something to them that pretty much stayed invisible, and they were pretty happy for it to, to be that way. But in every other area, they highly preferred visibility over invisibility, whether that be in terms of faculty engagement, interactions with other students, or engagement with the content. In terms of faculty engagement, what we found that was that our faculty were the ones who hesitated to make themselves visible. They were afraid that if they created a video or other product for their students, that it wouldn't be quite perfect, that their, you know, their dog would run in in between and bark, and then you know, it wouldn't be quite right for them to share publicly. Our students, however, highly preferred authenticity over perfection. Like they said, they would much rather have a video filled with bloopers than the spectacle of a, of a faculty member who was like a ghost who just appeared once in a while, dropped some grades on a platform, and then disappeared. So that was not the kind of interaction that they wanted. Similarly, they talked about wanting to have interactions with other students, even though it was online. Sometimes they complained that it was a little difficult to set up a meeting with other students, that it was hard to schedule, and it was hard for everyone to get together. But in the long run, they really talked about how much it helped them learn better when they had opportunities to interact with their peers. And finally, in terms of content, and this was perhaps the most interesting, they made it very clear that the online platform was not this neutral vacuum from which they could download information. They expected the online space and the online place to be 
a, an area where they could have interactions and discussion and dialogue and learn from their faculty as well as from each other. To them, online education was just education.